Valentine's, and it's usually celebrated with the idea of love and romance, but for me, as I told my middle schoolers that I've been doing in middle school chapel, that my love and my weakness is chocolate. So we had to do some chocolate feeding there. Um, I did not bring any chocolate with me today, but I did make some homemade goodies for this morning's meal after we get done, so I hope everybody's going to hang around and stay for that. So today we'll be looking, if you have your Bibles, if you want to follow along, I did realize last week that I never gave you anybody the opportunity to open their Bible because I was so nervous, I was just running through it and going, oh, they're all sitting through the Bible. Oh, I should probably wait and let them get there. Okay, so we're going to be looking at Romans 8, primarily 38 and 39, but some of the other verses also in chapter 8 of Romans. Yes, I am sure that nothing can separate us from God's love, not death, life, angels, or ruling spirits, I am sure that nothing now, nothing in the future, no powers, nothing above us, or nothing below us, nothing in the whole created world will be able to separate us from the love of God, from the love God has shown us in Christ Jesus our Lord. I was reminded of this yesterday afternoon, because in the midst of my not sleeping, I had to run to the grocery store to get some ingredients for what I was making today. And... Um, a few months ago, I live in Hill State Apartments on the 11th floor. A few months ago, I thought I was going to play this little science experiment, if you will. I, I love to see if, if um, um, I've never lived in a tall apartment building before. And so I opened up one of the windows that faces out into the quad, if you will, and just started making some noise to see if I could get any echo feedback. Interesting noises like. <laughs> Kind of like a bird sounds that way. If somebody didn't notice it, they would go, what is that? Well, the first couple times I did it, I noticed that some people would look up to see where it was coming from. And so, you know, and I, I don't know why yesterday I just decided to do that. And I went out and I was looking down on the quad and there was a several young Korean boys out there playing in the um, quad area. And after about the third one, I started noticing some of them were mimicking me back. I would make a sound, they would make it back. I said, oh, this is fun. So we did that for about five or ten minutes, and then I said, well, i got to get going to go get my groceries. So I came downstairs to the quad, and they were, a whole bunch of them were standing off on one side, and there was about three or four up on the playground equipment, and then three or four on the playground equipment. We're not demonstrating what I would call love. You know what I'm saying? There was something going on that was not good. Everybody else was just kind of there watching them, and I'm going, hmm, should I go over there and say something? No. Anybody that knows me. My Korean is limited to, I'm sorry, thank you, and goodbye, and hello. So I was like, well, I'm going to go over and have a conversation with the young man. So I thought, well, they already echoed back to me when I was up in my apartment. So I did a couple of my calls again, and they immediately saw, hey, that's that guy. That's the one that made the noise. So I walked over there, and as I got closer, I noticed that the two boys that were up on top of the playground, the two that were mainly really angry with each other, one had a bloody nose, and the other one was screaming at him in Korean. So I motioned to the other boys and thought, let me go. And so I kept saying, so remember my, my limited Korean? Me on Hamida! Me on Hamida! I kept saying that to them, and they're like, <laughs> and then they, they were like, huh? What? What's this, what's this old guy with beard doing over here? And I just kept saying that over and over again. Eventually, they finally said it to each other, and I even made them hug. I even motioned, hug, hug. <laughs> and so they did that. And so then I said, okay, my child's done here, God. I can go home. <laughs> so off I went, and I went to, uh, to the grocery store, got my ingredient. And I thought, you know, if those boys are back there right now, I think I should buy them a treat. Sorry, Brian. But I bought some Twinkies and gave them away for free. As Brian knows, that's one of the items I buy for him at the school. So I got back to the thing. And the, immediately before I even got anywhere near my apartment, they were all still out there playing. And I was only gone for about half an hour. They come running towards me. They had no idea that I had anything for them, right? But they come running towards me, so I open up the Twinkies, I'm handing them out. And as I, leave, as I leave them, and I go upstairs, I'm thinking, tomorrow I'm talking about the love of God. Here I try to demonstrate it to people I can't even speak to. And yet, what am I doing? I mean, I came to Korea to witness to people about the Lord. And I'm kind of pompous about the fact that I work in the school, I get to talk to Jesus about the little kids speak English all the time. But what am I doing about my Korean counterparts? Where am I talking to them? This is this is going out to every American. So I'm going, I need to learn Korean. My wife has been pressing me to learn Korean for years. And I'm going, and I kept using all the excuses in the world why I didn't need to 
didn't do it. I mean, I have plenty of reasons why I should. My mother-in-law speaks no English. I would love to have a conversation with her other than, good morning, hello. Um, so, and, and it just struck me as like, if we're going to be showing the love of God, then we need to be doing all that we can to do that. God does that for us. And so, my, my uh, press for the next year and a half or whatever is to try to learn Korean so I can talk to the Korean kids about Jesus' love. Okay, so who loves you and why? Is it because you're good looking? <laughs> Is it because you're so cuddly? Is it because you got lots of money? Is it because you're a fun person to be around? Or here's my favorite. Is it because you're a family and they have to love you? <laughs> well, the good news is God doesn't follow any of those rules. God has his own rules. God loved his. He wants to love you. He desires to love you. He chose to love you. He decided to love you even before you were born. There's not a single one in this room. For he made him who made no sin for us so that we might become the righteous through Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Probably one of my favorite verses. I'll never forget as long as I live because it amazes me that even before I was born, he decided, I love Merlin so much, I'm going to die on the cross for him. What an awesome show of love. Who can even compare to that? No one. Not me for sure. God loves you because God is love. And we see in 1 John 4.16. So we know that the love that God has for us, and we trust that love. God is love. Everyone who lives in love lives in God, and God lives in them. This is great news. We should be shouting this from the mountaintop. I should be screaming that out my window and saying, ah, ah, ah. But I'm going to get there once I learn how to say it in Korea. God's love is unconditional. Jesus didn't go to the cross because of any love you had for him. He didn't say, oh, um, you know, they don't really care for me that much. I think I'll skip going to the cross today. Maybe I'll run to some people tomorrow that are worth going for. No, he didn't do that. He didn't do any influence that we have on him. Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, he died for us. He didn't wait till we're all perfect. Even we hear, um, I, re I was reading my quiet time this week in Matthew, the story about when uh, when Jesus uh, goes and collects, uh, tells Levi that he wants him to follow him. And the Pharisees are going, How would you want to have that guy with you? He's a sinner. Why are you hanging out with those? And Jesus said, I didn't come to heal the well. I came to heal the sick. And we are sick. Amen? All right. Romans 8, 31, 33 says, So what should we say about this? If God is for us, no one can stand against us. And God is with us. He even let his own son suffer for us. God gave his son for all of us. So now with Jesus, God will surely give us all things. Who can accuse the people God has chosen? No one. God is the one who makes them right. Excuse me. One of the downsides of taking cold medicine is really dries you up. <coughs> dries you up. Again, following Romans 8, 34 and 35, who can say that God's people are guilty? No one. Christ Jesus died for us, but that is not all. He was also raised from the death. And now he is at God's right side, speaking to him for us. Can anything separate us from Christ's love? Can trouble or problems or persecution separate us from his love? If we have no food or clothes or face danger or even death, will that separate us from his love? No. So here we are with the key verse again. Yes, I am sure that nothing can separate us from God's love, not death, life, angels, or ruling spirits. I'm sure that nothing now, nothing in the future, no powers, nothing above, nothing below us, nothing in the whole created world will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that shows us in Christ Jesus our Lord. I don't know about you, but this makes me feel really good. Because I sometimes think about that. How, how fickle we are when it comes to love. How easy it is for us to fall in and out of love with people that are dear to us. Yet God, no matter what we do, no matter how we are, no matter where we are, no matter who we're with, 
he always is there with love. So, so like the bits, uh, I, I need to kiss them. Kids, uh, let's go, hmm, how, many, how many kids do we have here that are 12 and under? Raise your hand, come on, don't be afraid. No. Okay, they have to older this. 16 and under. Alright, alright, so you see up here that there's a, there's a phrase there that says, when God didn't love you. So, when I hold up my thumb, you're going to yell that out. Are you ready? It's only four words. When God didn't love you. Oh, you guys got to do better than that. I will put the mic down. Then that way you can't say that's not fair. You have a mic. I can speak really loud. I have a teacher's voice. I've been told, you talk too loud. My wife says, honey, stop talking so loud. This is my normal voice. I grew up in a family of 12 children. You have to talk loud or you didn't get hurt. <laughs> okay, so, kids, you ready? You have never lived a day, a minute, a second when? You know what? Let's just make everybody say it so the kids that need some help and the grown up can help them. Alright, let's go. Where is my thing? You may have hidden in shame from God like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, but. You may have discerned him like the disciples when they fled with Jesus and arrested, but. God still loves you. You may have denied him like Peter when they asked him about his relationship with Jesus, but. God still loves you. In it all, through thick and thin, good times and bad times, God still loves you. You never leave his mind, his thoughts, or his sight. He sees the worst in you and loves you anyhow. Jeremiah 31 3 says, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. When you are sitting at the bedside of a loved one who is wrapped with pain or disease, I still love you. When you sit at the graveside at the losing one who has touched your heart and life, I still love you. When you weep because your financial burdens seem too heavy to bear, God still loves you. When you see your family torn apart or your marriage headed for disaster, God still loves you. When your heart aches because of a great sin you committed and you feel like God can never forgive you, God still loves you. <sighs> God can never love you any more than he already does. And God can never love you any less than he already does. You can't get any more of God's love because God is love. We think God will love us more if we cuss less, drink less, sin less. We think that God will love me more if I pray more, study my Bible more, attend church more, live a better life. While these things might be indicators of both our love for God, it's not for His love for us. They don't impact Him. They don't change the way He feels about us. Why? Romans 8.39 says, We shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God's love isn't based on you, it's based on Jesus, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God will always love you as much as he loves his son Jesus. Why? Because you are in Christ. I told you I'm a short speaker. And today's potluck. <laughs> I'm hungry. Conclusion. Are you experiencing God's love for you? Is it real to you? Romans 5.5 5 says, The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. We all have the capacity to know, feel, enjoy, and experience God's love. How? Because of the indwelling of the person of the Holy Spirit who lives within us. So, my prayer for each and every one of us is that we go forth knowing that God's love is with us all the time, no matter where our situation is, no matter where life is taking us, so especially in those times where we feel like we're in the deepest, darkest hour. That's probably even the more important time to realize that God loves us. Although sometimes I think it's harder to feel God's love when everything's going well. We get into a cap like, I got this. I don't need God's love right now. Everything goes hunky dory. But those are the times when you need to be praying more. We're going to be concluding a series this week on giving my middle school kids from the book of James, which I talked about from last week. And we're going to be talking about the prayer of, of how we should pray and why we should pray. And the need to recognize that God's love is always there for us, no matter how we are, no matter how we act. He still loves us more than we could ever imagine. Amen.
So, let God's love permeate your life. Wake up in the morning and bask in the sunshine of his love. Go to bed at night and rest in the comfort of his love. Live in his love. Immerse yourself in his love. Fill your life with his love. Let his love overpower you, indwell you, surround you. And never forget John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we again thank you so much for this opportunity just to come before you and to experience the love that you have for us. That no matter what, how bad we are, or no matter what situation we're in, your love is always there, always complete, always excellent, always perfect. And we cannot even compare how that works in our life. We just have to accept it because that's who you are. You are love. And so I pray for my brothers and sisters here that you would just let, allow them to feel that love of God. I pray for those that are here today that you would be with them. I pray for Pastor Mike and Sharon as they conclude their time in the States, that you would just give them travel mercies on their way home. And most of all, I just thank you for you being my God and my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.